All right, Algebra 1, we're moving on to 2-6, ratios, rates, and conversions. And our essential question today is, how can ratios be used to help us compare or convert quantities? That's what we're going to end up doing at the end here, okay, showing you how that works. Let's define a couple of things here. What is a ratio? A ratio is a fraction, that thing we hate, so we change the name. Most of you can't remember what it is, so we talk about ratios and you don't get scared. It compares two quantities. It can be written as a fraction, A over B. Remember, that's the same as A divided by B. We've been talking about that in here. With this uh, colons in here, A to B, or you can compare A to B, okay? Comparing two different quantities. A rate, which we talked a little bit, we're going to talk more about slope in the next chapter, but slope is a rate, rise over run. Uh, a rate is a, a ratio, or a ratio that compares quantities measured in different units, like miles per hour, miles per gallon, dollars per hour, rate of uh, pay that you get per hour. That's all a rate, okay? It's comparing two different units, miles an hour, dollars an hour. There's a bunch of them out there, okay? A unit rate has one in the denominator, okay? And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at an example of a unit rate. A unit rate. Who has the best deal? You go into a store or you're looking at some ads in the paper. You're looking to buy a shirt. Store A says they've got $25 for two shirts. That's what they advertise. Store B is advertising, we'll sell you four shirts for $45. And store C says, we'll sell three shirts for $30. Well, who's giving you the best buy per unit, per shirt? How much for each of them? Well, store A, there's our ratio. $25 for two, that's $12.50 each, or per unit. $45 for four, that's $11.25 each. $30 for three shirts, that's $10 each. That's your best buy. It's the cheapest, okay? That's your best buy. That's a unit rate. How much for each individual shirt, and then you can compare the price. What is a conversion factor? Conversion factors. You guys in science use this stuff quite a bit uh, from time to time in there. It's a ratio of two equivalent measures in different units, okay? If you want to convert feet and inches, okay, we know that one foot equals 12 inches, and I write it as a fraction here. It could go the other way too, 12 inches equals one foot. It just depends what you're trying to compare or uh, convert. And I'll show you some examples on the next one. 60 seconds in one minute. Okay, 5,280 feet in a mile, 1,760 yards in a mile. Um, it, it, the list goes on and on, 16 ounces in a pound. Just depends on what units you're, you're uh, trying to convert from. So let's look at a couple examples. Okay, what if we want to convert 330 minutes to hours? Okay, now these conversion factors... Remember when you're, when you're multiplying fractions, how you can cross cancel or you can simplify straight up and down? That's what we're going to try to do here. If we have 330 minutes, what, and I want to end up and find out how many hours that is, okay? I'm going to multiply it by a converting factor. And my factor is going to be, since we're talking about minutes and hours, what do I know about the two? Well, I know that there's 60 minutes in one hour. Or in one hour, there's 60 minutes. So which way do I want to write it? I want to write it this way. Why? So then that way, I can cancel out my minutes. Okay. If I wrote it the other way, I would have minutes over hours. I couldn't cancel my minutes. Notice now that when I write it this way, I cancel out the minutes as far as units go and I've got hours left over on top. And that's what I want. I want to know how many uh, hours that represents. So 330 over 60, and remember I can write this over one, hours. When you divide that into it, you get five and a half. If I did my math right, okay. 60 goes into 300 five times. 30 minutes over 60 minutes is a half of an hour, so 5.5 hours. Okay, you can do it in the metric system. If I have 15 kilograms 
and I want to convert it to grams. There's a thousand grams in a kilogram, right? But I'm going to put my kilogram on the bottom here so I can cancel those. And my thousand grams right here. Okay? So 15 times a thousand, that's 15,000 grams. All right? Last one here. Okay? And you guys that are out there in football, hopefully this rings a bell with you here. If you're running 40 yards in 4.5 seconds, how many miles per hour are you going to run here? Notice here now, we're looking at more units, okay? Instead of being over one unit here, I now have 40 yards. Let me back this up a little bit so I don't run out of room. Sometimes these get a little long. 40 yards in 4.5 seconds. Okay, now I want to end up over here with miles per hour, so I want to get miles over hours. So I'm thinking about that. When you start thinking about multiplying these things by the conversion factors and how you can cancel out, as we're canceling we want to make sure that we end up leaving miles on the top and hours on the bottom. And this is what I mean. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We're, we want to get yards. Somehow we want to get miles up here. So I'll start with that. Well I know that there are 1,760 yards in a mile. And I can cancel that out, and I can cancel my yards out. I got my miles on top. I'm, I'm good to go there. Okay? Now, some of the, if you look in the back of the book, there's uh, reference sheets with the conversions on it. Um, you've seen them in FCAT stuff before. Uh, you, know, you may just have to look up some of the stuff if you can't remember them. Uh, now, we want to get seconds out of here, and we want to get hours down here. So I'm thinking, how many seconds are in an hour? Well, I know that in a minute, there's 60 seconds. So that cancels out my seconds. And then I know that there's 60 minutes in an hour. So my minutes cancel. So what am I left with? Miles over hours, miles per hour. Okay? So now what I want to be able to do is just multiply straight across. So I'm going to take my 40 times my 60 times my 60. If I would have helped if I had a calculator here. And that's going to be over 4.5 times the 1760. Okay? And that's going to give me miles per hour. So all it is now is just a matter of multiplying this stuff up. Um, let's see, we got 36 here times 4. That's uh, 36 times 4, isn't that 144? And 4.5 times 1760, that's going to be about, it's in the neighborhood of 70,000 hours. So when you put it in there, you're running about 2 miles per hour. Oh, wait a second, I got one too many zeros. That might be closer to 20 miles. Eh, you get a calculator, you can figure that out. But that's roughly what we're looking at there. So conversion factors, depending on the units you want to end up with and what you start with, I can write them like this or I could have written it the other way so that I can cancel out the appropriate units until I get left with what I want to do. We'll do more of this in class so you'll see. Um, this can get a little confusing, a little cumbersome as you can see here. These are pretty straightforward but when you get to here with the double units, you got to do a little bit extra work. You got to write it all out so you can keep track of it. And you can tell at the end a calculator would be, be helpful. Okay? All right, so ratios, that's a fraction. Rates, comparing two units. Um, and then converting these things, okay, is a big deal. Um, we'll look at more of this in class, and then we'll look, look at some uh, uh, application of it too. All right, so I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.